I don't know if I was thinking about becoming a pro. I definitely, that was like my dream was to be on the tour and serving with all these guys. So I didn't know if it was going to happen, but that was definitely what I wanted to do. I've grown up in a place where surfing's really like the only thing. And so, I mean, I've grown up around surfing. It's like been my life since I, as long as I can remember. My name is John Florence. I'm a surfer. I just finished our new film, View from a Blue Moon. All right, Reddit, ask me anything. It was really cool to work with Brain Farm. They're really knowledgeable about the whole cinematic side of things. You know, we're just kind of come from surfing and filming surfing stuff, and we get inspired by watching really, you know, all kinds of videos and edits. Brain Farm, you know, they made Art of Flight, and they have a lot of knowledge about that stuff. In the beginning, they weren't too knowledgeable about surfing. We weren't too knowledgeable about dealing with all that gear. When the waves are good, you'd want to go surfing right then and there they would take like 45 minutes to get ready. The first trip we had like, I think we had 20 people with us, which was a huge crew. It was the biggest crew of the whole movie. And then after that, we kind of slimmed it down to what we needed. That one was just kind of just like threw everything at it. Towards the end, we figured out like what exactly we needed to shoot what and what we wanted. So it made it much more streamlined, especially shooting with the helicopter and stuff. That's a that's a hard one. I'm very aware of the helicopter. It's hovering like 15 feet over your head. And I mean, we have clips of me getting like from the rotor wash of the helicopter of me just getting blown off the back of the wave. That's pretty funny. Making a film like this, I wanted to make it because I enjoy working with the cameras and stuff. And I've been working, you know, just shooting photos and stuff since for like the past eight years while just traveling around. We go to all these cool places, so I enjoy shooting photos. That got me into the camera side of things, like to be able to work with all these big cinema cameras and lenses and cinema people and helicopters and all kinds of crazy stuff that you could ever think of. That was one of the main things. And then, you know, getting to go serve all these amazing places with just me and my friends. And I think that's the second thing, like that, that is like the biggest draw for me for the movie, for making the movie. My favorite spot to film for the movie, probably South Africa was my favorite place. That place was just, it's just one of my favorite places to go in general and to be able to go there and film with the equipment we had. was kind of something I've dreamed about for a while because I've been there a lot and just like, wow, if we could capture this with something amazing, it would be really cool. Yeah, I really enjoy the tour a lot. The only thing I would change about it would be to make it more in a season. And so we had half year on, half year off. That would kind of allow us a little more time to film and stuff. I'd rather do the events back to back to back. And it would give us a big amount of time to do movies and other stuff like that. I don't know if I have a best surfing story overall. I have some pretty funny ones and scary ones. The scariest one was when me and my friend surfed this big outer reef wave and it was just us two and we didn't really know how big it was because it was really far out there and we have we had the new blow up vests and all that stuff and so we paddled out and <clears throat> we were like sitting there and I was like I think we're in the spot right now and we paddled over like a smaller wave and then there was like maybe like a 20 foot wave breaking behind it and I was just looking at it like we're not in the spot right now <laughs> and it landed on us and I was like underwater for a while and I was kind of trying to stay calm. So finally I was like, okay, I gotta go up. And so I pulled my vest and it blew up and I slowly started going up. And then right as it got to the surface, another wave hit me and I just went straight back down. And I was just like, oh no, this is, <laughs> this is really scary. And then I kind of was getting rolled with the wave because my vest was blown up. It was just a long time underwater, two waves and really kind of a scary moment because if we had no water safety or anything. It's all really a personal preference kind of thing. And I mean, there's so many things that go into a surfboard, whether, you know, the waves that you're riding. I don't think about the boards that much, to be honest. I just get boards and tell them how I kind of want to change it and then change it to that, you know? 
it varies from big wave boards to small wave boards. All the boards are so different for such different kinds of waves. Changing the shape of the tail, shaping the con changing the concave in the bottom of the board, you know, how much lift you're getting out of it and how fast the board goes down the line. And you know, you, when you add things, when you're like, okay, I want my board to go really fast across flat sections, then it's gonna make the board stiffer. So you lose things when you add things and it's kind of finding that happy medium. You're very happy when you find a good bar, like when you find a really good bar that works for a certain type of wave. Small waves are the hardest, but when you find a good small wave board, it feels amazing. And I won't ride it until I have a heat because I'll just end up breaking it. <laughs> My boards last probably, if I'm like free surfing, two weeks. Yeah, they don't last very long. <laughs> when I'm in Hawaii, like I surf a lot. The other winter I broke like 38 boards or something. I had a big pile of them in my yard. <laughs> I surf a lot, and, and the waves we surf in Hawaii like to break your boards. <laughs> I've had a few close encounters with sharks. I had one in Africa where the whole McFanning thing just happened at Jeffrey's Bay. I had one where I was sitting there right before dark, and it I looked down, and I just saw like the head of one kind of come up below my board. And it wasn't a huge shark, but it was still enough to scare me <laughs> a lot. Like, I mean, I went in as quick as I possibly, I, I ran over the reef. <laughs> and then I had another one that wasn't as scary, but it was much more dramatic. Um, at home in Hawaii, actually, where there's a bunch of us and we're sitting in the lineup and there was like a turtle outside, like maybe 20 feet. 30 feet ahead of us, not like really close. And the thing was like flapping its arms and a tiger shark just took the thing out of the water in its mouth and was just rolling right there with it. And I mean, we watched it for like a minute or two. And then I was just kind of said to myself, I'm like, okay, it's time to go in, I think. And just kind of slowly paddled in. <laughs> my most memorable wipeout was probably the time I broke my back. That was a, yeah, that was a scary one. Or actually there's two, there's that one and then there's another time I got knocked out. I just kind of came up, I, I wasn't paralyzed or anything, I was just like in so much pain and my whole body was real stiff. It's like kind of paddled to the channel and then someone helped me get to the beach. And I just remember my whole like back area being in so much pain and I didn't know what to think. My pre-contest routine, I've been working on it more and more lately. I've just kind of started doing more warm-ups to get my body moving. I listen to like pick two or three songs per event, songs that I like at that time, and just kind of listen to them on repeat. And that kind of just helps keep my mind off uh, it's the surfing, the, the heat and overthinking it and kind of think about the songs more. Like my bass in music is like, I like Pink Floyd and you know, Talking Heads and Zeppelin and Sabbath and all those bands. But yeah, Easy was a good one for the last event. <laughs> I see surfing changing a lot with bigger waves, a lot more paddling into bigger waves on that side of things. And then for, I see it going to the air a lot more and with bigger flips and more spins and yeah, just some general bigger airs on bigger waves. It's just kind of where the progression is, has been going, you know, for a pretty long time now. Everyone's adding different, you know, taking things from snowboarding and skating and trying them out surfing. And I think snowboarding's a really good thing to look at because the way they twist and flip and spin is, we can kind of apply it to surfing. I mean, we'll never be able to go as high or as far as they do on some of the big jumps, but you can definitely take a page out of their book and kind of apply it to your surfing. <laughs> I haven't heard the phone ring, but I'll make sure to listen for it. <laughs> That's really, really funny though. <laughs>